William Bendix in The Life of Riley. With Marjorie Reynolds as Peg, Tom DeAndre as Gillis, Lugene Sanders as Babs, Wes Morgan as Junior, and Gloria Blondell as Honeybee. Produced by Tom McKnight and directed by Abby Berlin. Well, you know, Papa, the telegram probably scared him. Oh, why should a telegram scare him? I sent it collect. <laughs> we don't want no brushes. <laughs> well, you can lay one sample. Papa, it's me, Chester. <laughs> Martha, where do you see what's here? Ask him to leave a sample. We don't need any brushes. Mama! Mother, Mother. you wonder. Can we come in, Papa? Well, come in. Here are in. What else can I say? Old place hasn't changed a bit. No. Hi, Grandpa. I told you that. Oh! You see, Peg, I told you Papa would be glad to see me. Chester, it's so good to have you home again. You and Peg and the children. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. How did you come? By streamliner. All the way from California. Having a round-trip ticket. Yep, round-trip for the whole family. <laughs> it's good for six months. Yeah. Of course, we can only stay a few days. Well, I, by that time, we'll be out of money. Yeah. But I got a good job to go back to, and that's what counts. Well, we wish you could stay longer, Chester, but we know how it is. We must all be tired and hungry. I'll fix something to eat. Oh, oh we'll help oh, you, Mother. Bab. Would you like ham or cheese or what? Oh, anything, Is that Grandpa. They promise to keep your job for you. And the minute your back is turned, they give it to someone else twice as stupid as you are. Oh, not a chance, Papa. I'm one in a million. <laughs> well, has your neighborhood changed much? Not much. First thing I gotta do is take Babs and Junior out and show them off to my old friends. Don't push your luck. What do you mean? <laughs> Nobody around here thought you'd ever amount to anything as a kid. Well, that's the reason I gotta look them up, so as I can prove it to them. <laughs> There's some sandwiches in the kitchen, Junior. Oh, thanks, Grandma. We'll have ours when they're finished. Now, uh, let me see. What about sweeping arrangements? Well, I hope we're not crowding you. Oh, nonsense. Mike, uh, do we still have that old army cot? It's in the cellar behind the furnace. Bring it up. Bring it up? So might have been sleeping on it down there. Chester isn't going to sleep on it. You are. <laughs> what a revolting development this is. But, Dad, couldn't we visit your old neighborhood after we see the Empire State Building? In Times Square and the George Washington Bridge? What kind of talk is that? I'm taking you kids to places the tourists never see. All right, Dad. What's first? Schwartz's delicatessen. Lucky tourists. Will he be surprised to see me? Come on. <laughs> Look, the same old egg crates that were here when I was a kid. I used to trip over them. <laughs> was that Mr. Schwartz over there? Yeah, he hasn't changed a bit. Do you think you'll remember you, Pop? No, not anymore. I was only a kid then. I'm grown up now. Look, you kids stay here. I'm going around and surprise him. Oh, candy bananas. I haven't seen those in years. Penny a piece. Oh, I was just looking. We're here with our father. Pop's an old friend of yours. Who dips knife? What is your father's name? 
me. For 20 years, nobody has tripped over my egg crates. Well, I guess we all make mistakes we'd like to make over again. Uh, this is your father. That's right. Pop showed us the neighborhood where he got a start. The first day was $42. You paid Dad that much? The garage for fixing my truck, he ran into a three the second <laughs> Mr. Day. Schwartz, forget about it. I ain't working here no more. Thank goodness. <laughs> Remember, my family was one of your best customers. That's right. Your father used to come into the store every day to buy groceries for his mama. Every day? He used to bring a note. I started shopping for my mama when I was five years old. Uh, so you did, Riley. And you continued to come in here until you were 17. I never forget the last day he was here. He walked out without the groceries. How come, Bob? He forgot the note. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's been nice coming in here talking over old times with you, Mr. Schwartz, but we got to be going now. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I have got something for you. For me? Here you are. Well, what's this? An IOU. 72 candy bananas, 72 cents. <laughs> Signed Chester A. Riley. What a disappointing homecoming this turned out to be. <laughs> about Cooney Island, Bob. Why don't we go there? Chinatown would be interesting. Oh, so you don't like meeting your father's old friends, huh? Friends? You mean like Mr. Schwartz? Oh, forget about that, sorehead, Junior. We're going to meet some of my true friends, like... Well, what do you know? Mr. Callahan, the truant officer. Mr. Callahan, remember me? Riley, why aren't you in school? Ah! <laughs> what a sense of humor. Quit stalling. I warned you about playing hooky. But, Mr. Callahan, I'm grown up now. You don't look any different to me. Yeah, but I'm married. I got kids. Well, good boy, Riley. Uh, this is my son, Junior, my daughter, Bed. Hello. Hi. What a nice-looking pair of kids. <laughs> now about school. Oh, they already go to school. My Babsy's in college. We have some very fine night classes. Maybe you could come in after you finish your paper route. <laughs> I ain't got that paper route anymore. Oh, lost that too, huh? But don't give up, Riley. Just keep plugging. Maybe someday you'll get a job and make good. Good day to you. Should have poked him in the eye. I think you better go, Dad. Nothing doing. We're going to see my old football coach at Flatbush High. He'll remember some of the brilliant plays I was in. What position did you play, Pa? Right guard, and was I good? I remember one day we were playing that team from up in the Bronx. I was calling the signals. But, Pop, you said you played right guard. They don't call the signals. I was calling them for myself so I wouldn't forget them. Come on. Let's wait here until the team is through practicing. Oh, boy, they look pretty good. I'll see. Some team. Yeah, they don't look too bad. Hey, isn't that the coach coming this way? Yeah, that's Mr. Donovan. Of all the idiotic, stupid plays. And you call yourself a football player. Good old Donovan. Always knows what he's talking about. I can't ever remember of a player making such a stupid play. I'll take it back. I can remember one fella running 90 yards the wrong way to score a touchdown against his own team. A fella by the name of, uh, Chester Riley. <laughs> Whatever became of him. Come on. Oh, but Riley, we just got here practically. We're getting out of here today. I've been disgraced in front of my own kids. Every place I take them, somebody calls me stupid. Oh, Riley, you're not stupid. Just ask my old friends. They know me better than you do. We're having a wonderful visit. Let's not spoil it. It's a terrible visit. Do you realize that not one of my old friends has dropped by to see me? Well, maybe they don't know you're in town. Why don't you look them up? I can't. They tore down a pool hall. Riley, your folks have made plans. No, Peg. The sooner I get back among my real friends, the better. Like Gillis. Now, there's a guy that knows me and appreciates me. I can just hear him every morning calling, 
Hey, stupid, hurry up. You'll miss the bus. Sweet guy. No, Peg, it's better this way. I'm going to get out of this enemy territory and back among my allies. Hey, Mom, Grandpa wants to take Junior and me to the zoo. Nothing doing. You're not going to no zoo. Why can't we, Pa? Well, it looks like we're going home today. Today? But I'll come. Oh, come on, kids, out in the hall. What? Well, I right, don't worry about it, Junior. Come on, come on. Your father came home from his little tour of the neighborhood all upset. Well, you really can't blame him, Mom. I could tell he was hurt. Well, let me handle it. I'll see what I can do. You go on in the living room. Well, come on, children. I've been waiting. We can't go. What? We can't go to the zoo with you, Grandpa. We're going home today. Now, whose crackpot idea is that as though I didn't know? Don't tell me I can guess. Please don't talk mean to him, Grandpa. What? That's why he wants to go home, because everybody's been treating him so badly. Mr. Donovan said he was dumb. Well, he is. Look, who said he was dumb? Mr. Donovan and a lot of other people. Oh. Come here, children. Come here, sit down a minute. Now, look, I want to tell you something. Your father may not have been the smartest kid in the neighborhood, but he was the kindest, gentlest, and sweetest to his mother. And in my book, them things count the most. Your father was the finest lad in Brooklyn. I'd clout anybody in the head that says different. But Grandpa, you always say that, that... I know, I know, I know. I'm always picking on him. Well, now, I'll tell you something. A man has got to choose somebody once in a while to fuss at. And at my age, it's safer to choose someone close to you than it is a stranger. Dad thinks he doesn't have a friend left in this town. Oh, he does, does he? Well, let me tell you, he was the most popular boy in school. He had more friends than Patty has pigs. Only they don't know he's here. That's the real reason he wants to go home. Oh, it is it. <laughs> well, I'll straighten out that dumb... Ch uh, uh, I mean your father. <laughs> your children wait here now. I've got a scheme. Papa, what are you doing? I'm packing to go home. How can you go home when Mom and I are throwing a party for you? A party? We are. We're asking all of your best friends over. For me? All my best friends? Nobody will come. They will. They won't. They will. They won't. They will. <laughs> I get me wish. I got the biggest pack. Yeah, 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 that's right, Freddy. You're yeah, here at the house, four o'clock. Right. Ah, we missed anyone. How about Jerry the Barber? Jerry the Barber, good idea. Jerry the Barber. He always was very fond of Chester, you know. Yeah. Hello, Jerry? Mike Riley. Hey, look, uh, Jerry, the missus and I are throwing a party at four o'clock. Up here at the house for our boy Chester. How about Cullen? He got a shop full of customers. Well, bring him along. Sure, all of them. That's right. Bye. I'd show that boy of ours he's got friends in this town. Wait a minute. Schultz the butcher. Schultz the butcher. Here we are. Oh, doesn't that fruit punch ball beautiful? Aren't these lovely sons? I'll get it. I'll start dishing out the ice cream. Well, but this is my old classmate, Harry. Come on in, kid. Hey, after all these years. Hey, hello, Harry. Oh, uh, you're looking wonderful. Oh, thank you. This is my wife, Peg, Harry. I think these reunions are great. Mm. Yeah, nothing like getting together with your old friends. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go out in the kitchen and help Mother. Yeah, Harry and I will do some reminiscing. Harry, I'll get... Excuse me, I'll get it. Well, if it isn't all mine, right now. Oh, I haven't it? seen you in years. Hey, Ma, what are you doing these days? Uh, it's still the bottling. I make airplanes in California. Hey, is Pete still working with you? Yeah, old oh, Pete's still there. Gillis is working with me. Hey, did Pete ever get married? Yeah, he's got two kids now. Uh, Gillis has got one egg for a cute little fella. Boy, I'd sure like to see old Pete again. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Excuse me, I'll get it. <laughs> well, Pete! 
we were just talking about. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Remember me, fellas? I'm Riley. Who's he? I don't know. He says his name's Riley. And uh, whose house we at? You got me. I was getting a shave. The barber says, you want to go to a party? And here I am. Well, same with me. I was pitching horseshoes. Red come along and said, let's go. I live in California. I used to go to school with you fellas. This is my party. And if you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. And I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't all right. <laughs> don't blow a gasket, Chester. Why, right, we sure had you waiting there, Ryle. <laughs> Some gag, huh? Gag? <laughs> sure. You don't really think we didn't know you, do you? Nah, we thought we'd give you a little working over. Yeah, in case you got any stuck-up ideas. Well, gee, fellas. <laughs> Come on, Riley, tell us all about California. Yeah, hey, you ever see Squarehead Malloy out oh, there? I suppose you know them dames like Marilyn Monroe. How about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, fellas. Gee, Mom, Frank, this is the happiest day of my life. Now, aren't you glad we didn't go home today? I'll say. I never knew I had so many friends. And they're still coming. Oh. Oh, I'm afraid we're going to run out of ice cream. Well, don't you worry, Peg. I'll run out and get some more. No, never mind. I'll have Pop go. Now, you just relax, Mom. I'll go get it. How much do you need? A, a gallon will be plenty. One gallon! Oh! <laughs> Two gallons of ice cream coming up. out of my own party, they got another thing coming. Where do you think you're going? Oh, hello, officer. Most second story crooks wait till after dark. Well, I'm not a crook officer. I'm just trying to get into my own party. Oh, brother, I've heard some views in my day, but this stops them all. <laughs> it's the truth, officer. I'm down from there. Yes, sir. <laughs> we'll see whether this is your party or not. Open up in the name of the law. An officer. Well, uh, oh, whose party is this? Papa, tell him it's my party. You stay out of this. It's my boy's party. Well, sure, these are all my friends. Looks like a brawl to me. Well, we're just having cake and ice cream. Oh, yeah? You wouldn't arrest the son of a fellow I born in, would you? What division? 67 Mike Riley. 49 Frank Dooley. <laughs> Officer Dooley. You used to drive a patrol car over on 50th Street. That's right, I did. Then you remember me. Remember that Halloween 20 years ago? 20 years ago? Yeah, you came out of Callahan's bar, remember? Oh, I, I was probably in there to get an address out of the phone book. <laughs> All your tires were flat, remember? Oh, sure. Yeah. No, I remember. <laughs> I was the guy who did that. You did that? Yes, yeah. <laughs> right. Remember me? I'm master <laughs> That was really something, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was. Because of what you did, the chief took away my patrol car, and I've been walking a beat ever since. Come along. But oh, officer, what is this? The square this beat?
Have a good time at my party, fellas. Like home, back among my old friends. I thought you had some pretty nice friends in Brooklyn, too. Yeah, they were sure nice, too. I'll see. They all chipped in a buck to bail you out of jail. Well, it was a wonderful visit. See any old folks at all? <laughs> Dad, look! <laughs> I told you to call the milk company in the newspaper before we left. I didn't have time to take, so he asked Gillis to do it, and the rat crossed me up. I should have stayed in Brooklyn among my real friends instead of coming back to this crummy neighborhood. I ought to pay Ryle. I pay the price. Hey, Ryle. Hey. Fuck them all. I pay. Oh, guys, oh, I need oh, to oh, oh, kill yeah, All them milk bottles, you Benedict Arnold. Some gag I pulled on you, huh, Ryle? You... Gag? Well, sure, you didn't think I'd forget, did you? Everybody's pulling gags on me. Why? Don't you see, Riley? It's because they love you. Yeah? Well, of course. People don't take the trouble to pull gags on people they don't love. Yeah. Give us your old goat. I missed you. Get your things off. I got a welcome home dinner already for you over at our house. You see, Peg, I told you there's no place like home. Let's go and get washed up. Huh? Okay. Let's go and get washed up.